A great film by Robin Williams you may have missed is 1998's What Dreams May Come, and it's a trip for sure. Obviously, spoiler alert, while I may give you my opinion on the film here, that's no substitute for experiencing it yourself. Links to the movie are in the description as well. I met this beautiful girl by a lake. We open with a calming boat ride and Robin Williams' voice narrating the intro. Why are they both acting like they couldn't have just gotten knocked into the water? Even Chris gets up in the boat ready to yell at someone, then the second he sees her he's like, no 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 it's okay, ram my boat and wake me from my nap anytime. You don't say, Chris. This is the perfect start to one of those cheesy romance movies. The two of them eventually run into each other on dry land, and the two of them believe it is fate that has brought them together. Naturally, the two of them get married. These two are made for each other. At least they can laugh about it. I know plenty of people that that would have ruined the whole wedding. As time rolls on, the two of them live a happy and fulfilled life together. Eventually, kids arrive and grow up while time counts down to a fateful moment. Their children are Mary and Ian, and they seem like a perfectly happy family. It was the last time Annie and I saw them alive. I wish that the first time I watched this I had known this was going to start off so depressing. I'm already invested in the characters. Oh god, this is depressing. Oh okay, we're just going to brush right by that, good to know. Just so you don't get false hope, the tone of this movie does not change much. There's a consistent sense of hopelessness for quite some time. But Chris does his best to get rid of that for many children. We find out that he's a special kind of pediatrician and he does his best to help a girl smile when she comes in for results. Meanwhile, his wife is having a nervous breakdown at her job, so she calls Chris while he's working with a little girl. After solving Annie's problem, he turns his attention to the little girl again. It's it's comforting to know that their relationship has prospered even with the events of four years earlier. Please no. Damn it, give me a break, it's been 13 consistent minutes of pure depression. It turns out that the accident wasn't enough to kill him and he's transferred to the local hospital where they treat him for his injuries. At least there's hope. No, maybe the movie is just saying that he had complications. He's gonna be just fine. You've died, Chris. Well, at least it can't get worse. Albert is an old colleague of Chris's and now his soul is here to guide Chris through the afterlife. While Albert tries to explain to Chris that he really is dead but he doesn't want to face it, Chris remembers a time from when his kids were still alive. This movie just doesn't let up. Even in death, Chris is dreaming about when he and Annie had to tell his daughter that they were going to kill her dog. As Chris attends his own funeral, he sees how Annie is hurting, but he can tell that Annie can feel his presence there. Later, Chris reads what Annie writes in her diary. The more she writes about how Chris is all that kept her sane, the more Chris realizes that Annie is at a crucial moment. But soon he realizes that his lingering presence is hurting Annie more. No one ever warned me what a tearjerker this film was, we're still in the beginning! Chris runs down a tunnel towards a bright light and when he wakes up, he's in paradise. His dead dog welcomes him and the world around him falls into puddles of pain. He's happy again. Gonna drown. Poor guy didn't even sound frantic about dying again. Albert tries to explain the ins and outs of being a consciousness after death which Chris finally begins to understand. While Chris is moving forward with his afterlife, Annie is trying to express her pain through her art. What she doesn't know is that what she's painting is becoming part of Chris's afterlife. As she begins to paint a new canvas into a masterpiece, Chris sees the new addition and makes his way over oh to investigate. Chris! If I wasn't expecting even more depression to follow now, I would think that was the most magical scene of all time. After they return to Chris's house, he begins to have fantasies of Annie being there with him. Next, he has pieces of Maria's childhood appear on the beach next to him. Chris is obviously beginning to lose his paradise, as you can see the weather changes reflect his state of being. Chris asks why he hasn't seen his kids yet, but Albert says that he's just not ready to see them. Everything happens when Chris is ready and never earlier. The next day, Albert has other obligations so a woman named Leona shows Chris that there is actually a mutual city in the afterlife and she takes him there. Here we find out that Albert actually works in the afterlife. He saves lost souls and brings them to their respected afterlife. We whole family lost in car crashes, enough to make a person buy a bike. 
We cut back to Annie who is trying to rationalize everything, but she actually starts blaming herself for Chris's death. I want to laugh, but I can't help but just feel sorry for every single character in this film. She's lost everyone, yet she holds on longer than some others would. Leona tries to help Chris better understand his grief by making him relive a memory of his children. In the memory, we see that the city he's in is actually part of a paper dollhouse from Maria's room. It's a happy moment in the movie. Finally! It won't last long. Chris Annie's dead. She killed her suspected. I'm with you. You're not alone. Called it. With this news, Chris starts to lose what emotional stability he might have just gained, but somehow he pulls it together. You never see her. She's a suicide. Suicides go somewhere else. Yeah, and the reality is suicides go to hell? No goddamn judgment in that! As Albert tries to explain that suicide victims end up somewhere else other than the place Chris is, Chris refuses to accept this. He believes that Annie has suffered enough and they should be together. Too self-absorbed in life that they built this world self around Self-absorbed? That does not apply to Annie, alright? This is one of the most interesting ways I've heard this described. A whole lot deeper than the black and white explanations everyone gives. Even with an explanation like that, Chris cannot accept it. What we and others have seen, and no one has ever seen a suicide brought back. Stick around, Chief. You ain't seen nothing yet. I do believe that we're about to witness a classic Robin Williams movie now, not the depressing epic poem we've been watching this whole time. As Chris embarks on his journey, Albert takes Chris to the tracker. We'll find her. You can say everything you long to say, including goodbye, even if she can't understand it. Who tells Chris that he might be able to find Annie, but she won't recognize anything he says. He also says that it might be a good time to finally say goodbye. As the three of them set sail for Annie, they run into some pretty nasty conditions. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if they died a second time the way Chris's luck has been. They're not even in hell yet. Where did these people come from? Effective when in doubt, just shout. Just kidding. Their boat is capsized and Chris finds himself remembering a conversation Annie and him had about Ian. Ian in turn explains to his father that he's not actually blowing it. He's just not his father. And with that, Chris's memory goes to his last goodbye wave on the road to his kids. Chris and all the other bodies wash up onto the shore that is directly connected to the gates of hell where we find out that it's a wasteland of machines. Interesting hellscape, kind of original considering the time. The closer they wander to the gate, the more Chris remembers one of his last conversations with Ian. He's the type of guy that men want to be around. He has character. He can't fake that. Of course, after that touching moment, we jump to the children's funeral. Chris is speaking in front of everyone about his son. As he takes a closer look at Albert, Chris believes he sees something in him. Your mom's not in there, son. Elevator to hell. Going up. We could have saved this man so much time and struggle if we had just put his kids there front and center once he died. This is like an emotional shape-shifting Where's Waldo. After the two of them hug it out, the tracker tells him that Albert has to stay behind. Reluctantly, Albert agrees. The two of them embrace one more time, but not before Albert tells Chris to bring Annie back with him. Chris and the tracker continue onward into hell. As they continue, Chris remembers back to a time when Annie has been committed to a psych ward after the children's death. She begins to question whether Chris and her are too different to stay together, but Chris reassures her that they'll get through it together. You got a choice. Life either goes on or not. And you choose life. The sheer strength of these two is astounding. To go through losing both of their children and still manage to stay together through it all is amazing. Well, that took a turn. Again, it's the imagery in this film that really makes you contemplate what you believe happens. This is a little unsettling. Chris makes his way through the sea of faces until he sees a familiar face. Once he recognizes her, he is immediately thrown into a memory of the two of them lying on the grass, looking at the clouds. As Chris runs to Annie, he falls through a weak spot in the sea of faces, and he falls farther into hell. As he emerges from the water, he finds where Annie is. It's their house. The tracker warns Chris that it's all an illusion set up by Annie. It's now that the tracker reveals that he's actually the real Albert. He explains that he really does wish he could save Annie, but he's more at risk being there than anywhere else in hell. Three minutes. Anymore, you could lose your mind. How can you lose your mind? 
once her reality becomes yours. Tell me he doesn't look like a man that would think that idea didn't sound that bad. As he walks into the remnants of a house that is just a memory, Chris finally comes face to face with Annie once again. Damn it, how did that actually get me to scare her? She scared us. As the two of them interact, you can tell that Annie doesn't know about anything Chris is talking about. She tries to ask him to leave, but Chris is persistent. He begins to explain what was so special about the anniversary they were going to celebrate the night he died. In a memory, Chris explains to Annie why that day was called their decision day. It was the day they decided to make a change. Don't give up, okay? It shows a lot of someone's character that he didn't have to die to have this epiphany. This is a memory of when they were alive. He already fixed the problem. This story isn't about a man redeeming his bad decisions in life. It's about a man who had already addressed them, but he wasn't going to let them hold him back, even in death. Even though Annie had given up hope, Chris shows her she can still see him in her dreams, but she's too caught up in her own guilt and world. As Chris realizes that he can't save her, he begins to apologize to her for everything he won't be able to do. He also thanks her for everything she ever added to his life. I apologize for every time I failed you, especially this one. That's how you know he's at peace with what's happening, at least as well as he could be. When Chris leaves and sees Albert, Albert explains that this trip has always been for Chris, never for Annie. In the end, Chris makes a decision that resounds with anyone that has loved that special someone. Will you tell my children I love them? This movie is depressing. I mean, we know it's not just going to end here, but the journey to here alone was enough to make someone grab a tub of ice cream and cry throughout it. Chris goes back in with Annie and he explains to her that they won't remember each other in a minute, but he's going to be with her forever. This is the best movie I've watched in a while. The sense of humbleness with the gravity of the story is perfect. After this, Annie recognizes Chris, but Chris has spent too long in her reality. He loses himself just as Annie remembers it all. Fun fact, Annabella, who plays Annie, wasn't going to take the role because she thought it was too intense and sad. After she read lines with Robin, she changed her mind though. After a quick montage of memories, Chris wakes up in his house in heaven again. He gets up to look around, and after he realizes where he is, he seems to lose a little bit of hope. Somehow, this movie is pulling off a happy ending. Considering how it started, I guess any ending would be happier than the beginning of the film. As Chris turns around, he sees that Annie really is right there with him. As the two of them finally reach their happy ending, tears of joy roll down their faces as they kiss each other. Chris finally asks how he got there, and Annie explains that it's all in his mind. If that's all it takes, why couldn't you get yourself out on your own then? It's apparently not that simple, Annie. Chris surprises Annie by showing her the landscape that she had painted of their dream home was indeed a reality for them now. The tracker even shows up and presents their kids for Annie to be reunited. After Chris and Annie spend some time together, the two of them decide to reincarnate again. Magically, they find each other once again. Soulmates are a wonder. All in all, this film was an emotional roller coaster that I should have seen coming, really. I mean, Robin Williams in the 90s was nothing but a poster boy for emotional roller coaster movies. I'm looking at you, Patch Adams. This is a masterpiece and it deserves to be recognized as such. I hope you enjoyed the video and by all means, watch the film for yourself. There's something there for everyone. If you did like it, leave a like on the video and suggest what I should watch next. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one, and I'll see you in the next video.